today I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to Procreate. I briefly run through all of the different features in Procreate and also share with you guys some of my favorite ways to use the app. I tried to cover as many features as I could, but it started to get a little bit long, so if you want me to expand on any of the features I talked about in the video, just comment below. I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial and let's get into it. So when you open up Procreate, you will see something that looks like this, and I have the I have the canvas size that is the size of the iPad, but you can pick any custom size you want. So starting in the upper right hand corner, we have our color wheel. So here you just have your classic color wheel and you can pick literally any color you want. And right here is your history. So this is just your recently used colors. And then right here is your most recently used palette as well, which I'll show you how to make palettes. Then you have your classic view, which is just like a square version of what we just saw. Then this is really cool. So this is the harmony um, section and this just picks automatically complementary colors. So that is a great tool to kind of help you pick out complementary colors. And then here you have just the little value bars which you can toggle on and pick your color this way and also type in a hex code here. And then here you have your palettes. So you can see on the side here, I've created a few palettes for myself just for different pieces I've done. And I also have some for my brand that I commonly use. So to make a new palette, all you have to do is go to the top and click the plus sign hit create new palette and then whenever you're here you'll just head back to the color wheel and you can see you have your untitled palette right here and then you can just pick different colors and add them in you can also create a palette from a photo so all you have to do is hit that plus button again and you can take the photo with your camera upload it from a file or pull it from your photos so I will just pull this photo and you can see that it has created a custom palette for me from that image. Then here we have the pen tool. So Procreate comes with all different kinds of pens. They have sketching pens, inking, painting, airbrushing, all different kinds. But you can also purchase different brushes from other artists. And some of my favorites are the Gladys Texture brush, brush Set. This is from the Gladys Thing Shop. I've talked about her a couple times on my channel and I just love her Procreate brushes. I also have these detail stamps from Threeology. So I love adding little sparkles and twinkles and just details like this to my drawings and different pieces. So this is perfect for that. But you can find these on Etsy or creative market or find different artists on Instagram and they might have their own brush sets. And if you wanna create a new brush set, like here I have one for my favorite brushes and you can just hit the plus button here and name your set and then whatever brush you want. So let's just say I wanted to add this mercury brush. All you have to do is press and hold and hover it over the set where the plus button appears and you will see that it has added it to your set so you can create your own custom brush sets for whatever you want. I like to have one for my favorites. And if you wanna delete any of the brush sets, all you have to do is just tap and hit delete. So whenever you get Procreate, I highly recommend just taking some time going through all of the different brushes and kind of testing them out and seeing what you like and how each feels. I feel like one of the big mistakes I made whenever I first got Procreate is I just immediately started drawing and I didn't take some time to really learn what all of the different brushes were, but it really does help just knowing what tools you have to use instead of just kind of haphazardly trying to find things as you are drawing and creating things. So I highly recommend whenever you first get the app, just kind of take some time and test out all of the different brushes. Even if you find a brush that doesn't look like something you would use, I recommend still just trying it out because you never know when you're gonna be looking for that kind of texture or look in any of your future art pieces. And here on the side of the screen is where you will be able to change your brush size as well as the opacity. So you can see you can have your brush be large, small, fully opaque, or you can bring the opacity down and it will be a little bit more sheer. 
You can also edit your brushes. So if you just tap on whatever brush you want to edit, you will see it pops up here in this drawing pad where you can create your own custom brushes. So you can edit things like the spacing, the streamline, jitter and fall off. But you will see on the left side here, there are so many different things that you can use to edit your brushes. I'm not gonna go through each of these right now because that would be for a separate video. So some tips you can do with the pen tool that I use a lot are creating perfect shapes. So if you draw a circle like this and you hold it, you'll see it'll keep its shape and you can make it smaller or larger. And if you want this to be a perfect circle, all you have to do is hold down here with your finger and you can see it's a perfect circle and you can do this with any shape. Then if you wanna fill this circle instead of going in, coloring it all the way in, that can take kind of a while. So all you have to do is go to the top and drag your color in the circle and it will automatically fill it up. Then here you have your eraser and in your eraser you can pick any of the different brushes which we will talk about in a little bit but this is just your classic eraser. So then right here we have the blend tool which this will essentially just blend two different colors together. So you can blend different colors together, or if you want to, you can also use it to blend the edges of a painting or blend out certain areas. Next, let's go into layers. So right here is where you will find your layers tab. Here you can pick whatever background color you want using either the color wheel or one of your palettes. And then here's where you will find your layers. So within your layer, there's a ton of different things you can do. So if you tap on the layer here, you will see all of your different options, which we will run through, but you will also see this N here and you can click the N and you can bring down the opacity of your layer. You can darken, color burn, Lydia burn, all of these different color adjustments you can make here, depending on the type of look you're going for. So you will see here all of the different things you can use. These are all pretty self-explanatory, you know, rename, select, copy, fill layer, and clear. Um, those are all pretty self-explanatory. And then you kind of get into the more advanced different settings. So I will start with alpha lock. And when you tap alpha lock, now this means everything outside of what you have colored is locked. If I'm trying to color out here, nothing's showing up, right? It will only show up within the confines of your color on your layer. So you can see it's not allowing me to color outside of the lines at all, and it's keeping it all within that initial green color. So next I'm going to cover mask. Now this is kind of a hard one to explain, but what it does is it will essentially obscure your initial base layer around 50%. So it kind of almost looks like you are erasing portions of your image. So you can see here, it kind of looks like it's almost erasing around half or so opacity of our image. All right, so I added another layer and I hit clipping mask. Now essentially, this does the same thing as alpha lock where it only allows you to color within the confines of whatever you've already put on your page. However, this is now in a new layer. So I'm gonna go in and I just picked a nice texture brush and I'm just gonna go in and add some texture. But maybe that's too dark and too much. So the benefit of having it on another layer is I can just head to that layer and bring down the opacity a bit so it's not as intense. And that's something you couldn't have done if it was all on one layer. Next, we have drawing assist, which I will go over in a little bit. I will share with you how to use the symmetry tool. We also have the invert tool, which will make it the inverted color. You can also use the reference tool, which this will make this the reference in the base layer of whatever you are doing. So here I have a new layer and I'm going to draw a circle. Drop in, fill the color but you see how it didn't fill that circle? That's because our blue leaf is the reference. So if you go back and you make this the reference, whenever you go to fill in, it will work. And you can go even further with these layers and swipe over and you can hit duplicate 
and it will just create another one of these leaves. So if you want, you can add a few more to your artboard. If you have multiple layers and you want them to be all on one layer, all you have to do is grab these and pinch them together and they will be all in one layer because you have a limited amount of layers you can use in Procreate. So sometimes you need to go in and you know mess with it so that you have less layers. Now I'm gonna show you how to use some of these tools over here. So first you have your selection tool, which will select whatever layer you're on. And on the bottom here, you have all different kinds of options that you can do to edit this heart so you can do a uniform you can make it smaller or bigger in a uniform way you can also flip it horizontally vertically rotate it you can also edit your layer in free form you can also distort and the warp tool So then you have your lasso tool, which you can just grab whatever object you want, like so, and you can select it and move it around just like we did before. Or you can select it and you can copy and paste it. You can also go here and hit rectangle and it will go color fill and you can draw rectangles and they will fill in whatever color you have. Or you can hit ellipse, which will also create little ellipses, fill colors in. And here you can click feather and you can feather these out. And then up here you have your toolbar, which has all different kinds of adjustments you can make. So I'm gonna quickly run through these. So to start, you have hue, saturation, and brightness. You can either do this on the layer or with your pencil. I'm just gonna choose layer. And you can quickly change the color, saturation, and brightness. Then you have color balance. Once again, I'll hit layer. Again, you can kind of edit the colors here. Then you have your curves, which you can edit your gamma, red, green, and blue. And you also have a gradient map. Then you have your different blurs. So first you have the Gaussian blur, motion blur, and perspective blur. Then you have other adjustments here. Then here you also have your drawing guide, which you can toggle on and then hit edit drawing guide. It can help you to, you can either just leave up the grid and you will have a grid over whatever you draw, which can be really helpful. But you can also click on different things like symmetry, which will allow you to have perfect symmetry in anything you're drawing. You can also toggle it on to help you draw straight lines. Here you can also toggle on a reference photo so you can choose from an image so that you have your reference photo ready for you and available to draw from if you are drawing from a real life portrait. To do a simple animation in Procreate, all you have to do is make sure that you're using different layers. So I will show you how to make a quick GIF that anybody can do, it's super easy to do, is you're going to pick a couple colors that you like and you can write a word and I'm just going to write So that seems pretty good. So we have five different layers with different colors. And now all you have to do to turn this into a little animated GIF is click share, animated GIF, 
And then here you can see that you can create as many frames per second as you'd like to make it faster or slower. Now that we have a brief overview of Procreate, I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite ways that I use Procreate and give you some ideas on how you can use this app as well. So to start, I like to use Procreate to make cute Instagram graphics. I'm sure you've seen similar Instagram graphics to this on social media, just little icons that you can add a little messages around. Um, also fun things like quotes and different lettering things. Just great way to create your own custom Instagram graphics so that you can have a totally unique feed. Another way I use Procreate is obviously creating my digital stickers. So I just create these using Procreate and I actually have a full tutorial on how I make digital stickers in Procreate, which I will link below. Another use for Procreate is you can create your own custom wall art. I think of you. And of you can also create your own custom iPad and iPhone background. I've also used Procreate to make my own bullet journal spreads. And I actually did a full tutorial on how I made these custom bullet journal spreads in a video where I set some goals and I did it all in Procreate. So I will also have that linked below as well. And finally, I also use Procreate just as a way to draw and express your creativity and just have fun and just draw as a way to kind of get off your phone, get off social media, even if you're not an artist. I am not an artist by any means, but I do find it fun to just kind of aimlessly draw and work on different pieces just for fun and just to, you know, give my hands something to do other than scrolling. Something I'm working on right now that is a fun little project that anybody can do is I've started doing these little doodles and I try to do them, you know, a couple of times a week. I've only done three, but I just kind of do it based on something I'm into at the moment or anything I like. And I'm just using the pencil tool and I'm just doing these little doodles. And I hope that, you know, in a few months I will fill up this whole page full of little doodles that I've made um, throughout the week. So that's just kind of a fun project you can do. And that's kind of, it can be kind of overwhelming to try to draw a huge thing, like a huge piece every day. But if you just, you know, want to do a little doodle a day, it can be a fun way to just kind of express your creativity and practice your drawing. Happy Halloween. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Procreate's face paint feature. To start, you're going to want to make sure you have the most updated version of Procreate as well as an iPad that is compatible with Face ID. Today, I'm using the iPad mini. First, you're gonna to wanna to open up a new canvas. I chose a square, and then you can go into your canvas settings and toggle on the reference tab. Then you will just hit face, which will turn on your camera. You can see you have markings for eyes, nose, and lips, which will serve as a guideline for your drawing. And then you can go in and draw literally whatever you want. I wanted to show you guys something kind of Halloween themed, so I did a Harley Quinn makeup look, but I've seen people do the clown from It, skeletons, butterflies, mermaids. And just have fun with it. I'm definitely not an artist at all, but I still enjoyed the process of doing this. And once you're done, all you have to do is click on options and you can export a photo or video using the filter. And that's the finished product. This is just a really fun feature in Procreate. I had so much fun and let me know if you guys try this out. And that is it for the beginner's guide to Procreate. Let me know what you guys wanna see next, if you guys wanna see more Procreate stuff. But until then, I will see you in my November plan with me and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.